welcome to More Up North. I'm so glad you're joining us. Uh, we've got a great panel uh, here tonight that are going to be wrapping up and discussing the uh, this week's election. Also, uh, Bill Wilikowski is going to be coming on and give us an update about the state Senate because there's actually some good news in what has come out of all of this. So uh, looking forward to the show. Hope you are too. And uh, we'll be right back with More Up North. being here. Welcome to More Up North, and I'm glad you're joining us uh, this week, of course, our wrap-up week after the election. Yeah, we had one. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's pretty much uh, still going, apparently still counting. Uh, I was really excited that Senator Bill Wilikowski from the east side of Anchorage uh, won his election. And uh, yeah. I, I agree with uh, the majority of the people in his district that he is the best bill to send to Juneau. And um, apparently, is, you know, they all think so, too. So they have re-elected him and, uh, to the, his second term of the Alaska Senate. Please welcome Bill Wilikowski. You. you know, even if people didn't pay attention to what you did in Juneau, the fact that you knock on so many doors is really remarkable to me. How many, how many doors, and you keep track, too, of this. Mm -hmm. How many doors did you knock on? I knocked on about 7,000 doors this time around, which was actually much less than I knocked the last time around. Last time around, I knocked on about 12,000 doors. But I, I actually have an advantage in East Anchorage because it's a very, it's the most dense district in all of Alaska. So I can go and I can do 100 doors a night, some nights I can do, and you know, you just, you break it down into small little chunks, right? You do 50 doors a night for 100 nights, it adds up. It does add up. And I know the people in your district, um, you know, are sending you back. Uh, before, when I first went on the radio, you were one of the first interviews I ever did. And I think it was one of the first interviews you ever gave. I got to find that tape because I know we were both was like, well, <laughs> what do you expect? And, and when you came back after that first session, I asked you, so how many things are different than you had expected to have happen? And it was really different. It was much different than you expected being a senator to the, to the state legislature. Oh, absolutely. Well, and one of the things I like to say, people like to say lawmaking is like making sausage. It's actually much worse than making sausage. When you're making sausage, at the sausage factory, it's clean, it's sterile. Everyone's on the, everyone's, everyone's trying to do the right, everyone's on the same mission. They all want to make good sausage. In the legislature, everybody has different competing miss, miss, missions. Everybody wants to try to do different things. So uh, that can be a challenge. Yeah, well, I don't know that they're all completely sterile, but comparatively speaking, uh, to Juno and some of the things that we see going on, uh, in back doors and, and uh, you know, when you walk into a restaurant and there's one legislator sitting with three lobbyists, um, yeah, you wonder just how well we're going to do. So one of the things that, um, that you worked on and were a part of with so many was a bipartisan thing. And I, I really want to talk about this because I think it's so... Uh, different than what's happening in Washington right now, where we're seeing, uh, you know, the head of the Senate there saying his mission is to make sure that Barack Obama is not reelected. It's not about health care. It's not about Afghanistan. It's not about terrorism. It's not about the environment. It's not about jobs. It's about stopping the president. And I think that, that that's true in a lot of places. But for four years, the Alaska state uh, Senate has done something really different and pretty remarkable. Can you talk about what happened the last four years and then we'll talk about if it's happening again? Right. Well, first of all, that's pretty stunning that any any elected official would say they don't want the leader of their country or their state to, to succeed. That's pretty stunning. You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Democrat, but and I'm an Alaskan. And when Sarah Palin was my governor, I wanted her to succeed. I wanted us to get our fair share for oil and gas resources. I wanted us to get a, a gas pipeline. I wanted us to get ethics reform. And as a Democrat, we worked with her. She got all of her major legislation passed because of Democrats, because we stepped across the aisle and we worked hand in hand with her. 
And, and that's the way it should be. I mean, that's just the philosophy that we have. It's, it's really disappointing that others don't share that philosophy around this country and around this state. But in Alaska, we've put together a bipartisan working group. We've done it for four years. I think that's what people expect. People want us to work together. They don't want to send people down there to fight just to just uh, choose partisanship over what's good for their state or their country. I think that's why people are fed up in D.C., because there's so much hyper-partisanship. And in Alaska, I think we've broken through that in a lot of levels. And we, because of that, we've been able to get a lot of things done. Well, you d and most people don't get to pick that when they go to work. If you're a teacher and you go to a school, you don't just work with teachers that have your same bumper stickers on your car. I mean, if you're a nurse at the hospital or a doctor, you don't have the option of being like, okay, I'm going to work today, and I'm not going to work with that person because, you know, they don't agree with my politics. I mean, I think what you did down there was really tremendous. Right, I don't think there's any other profession in the world. I mean, can you imagine that if you work in a business and you said, you know what, I don't like my boss, I'm going to actively work against him. What kind of business, the business, you'd be fired. I mean, no business would succeed if that were the case. And so it's sort of like that when we go down to Juno, the people expect us to work together. Yeah, they, you know, we have our philosophies and we have our ideas, but at the end of the day, <laughs> as people say, uh, they want things done. They want, they want jobs for their families. They want uh, affordable energy. They want uh, uh, us to go ahead and, and fix our roads and fix our bridges and, and improve our economy. Right, the reasons that we have government and to make sure we're protected right. and safe. And that should never, ever include one of those machines at the airport that can see through your clothes. It does not make me safer. Uh, so uh, right after the election, um, you know, and, and there was a, a big campaign by the Republican Party. They wanted 10 House seats and two additional um, Senate seats. And we have 20, uh, 20 senators, and it's been 10 and 10, which has actually forced this bipartisan coalition. Now, before it was six Republicans and 10 Democrats, correct? Yes. Okay, so right after the election, um, basically it stayed the same. It's 10 and 10. Because Con Bundy's vacant seat went to uh, Kathy Giesel. So it stayed uh, 10 and 10. So you had a reorganization meeting. And what, it, what came out of it? Well, uh we had the election, and, and it came out identical, 10-10 Senate. And, and when you have a 10-10 Senate, 10 Republicans, 10 Democrats, you have to have bipartisanship. You just have to. There's no other way to govern without that. And so, like we've done in the past, we 9 o'clock in the morning, we were all over at the LAO, Legislative Information Office here in Anchorage, and every, everyone, every senator in the state flew in, uh, just about. And we sat down and we put together an organization for next year, a bipartisan organization. And, and I think virtually every senator was offered a position in that. And, and it, 16 out of the 20 senators accepted a position in the majority. And so we've put together, I think, a very good bipartisan working group again. So this time, Johnny, Senator Johnny Ellis from downtown, Democrat, has been the, what is, it, what is it called? He's been the president of the, well, yeah. He's, he, not the, he's not the president of the Senate, but he's like the, the head of the leadership for the caucus, right? right? He's the majority leader. You have the, the, the leader of the Senate in Alaska is the president. And, but then after him, you have the rules chair, you have the majority leader and the two co-chairs of finance. That makes up your leadership team. And so the majority leader is sort of the person, sort of the traffic cop. They stand up, they make the procedural motions on the floor. They sort of keep things flowing on, on the Senate floor. The rules chair, though, is where the real power is. And that's where they're, they're the person that decides whether or not which bills go to, go to the floor for an actual vote, when to schedule them. So that uh, Senator Ellis got a promotion to the rules chair now. And so we're, we're just thrilled to have that. That's fantastic. Uh, so Gary Stevens from Kodiak is the president of the Senate, and, and uh, Johnny Ellis now uh, at rules, and, and uh, the majority leader now is Kevin Meyer uh, from the Hillside. And then uh, where exactly are you at? You're in a couple of spots here. Yeah, I, I stayed on the Resources Committee. That was real important to me. I really enjoyed that committee. I think it's going to be critical in the future for um, setting uh, terms for the for GIA, for the gas pipeline. Uh, so I, I wanted to keep my hand in that. Uh, I'm now the chair of the State Affairs Committee and also the chair of the Joint Armed Services Committee. So State Affairs, does that mean you get to bust people in the bathroom that are sneaking off together? <laughs> because it happens. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> state affairs is sort of a workforce but, committee. But somebody's like going to Hawaii and cheating on Alaska. I mean, I mean, what does it mean exactly? State affairs is a committee where a, a lot of it probably gets more bills than just about any other committee. It's sort of a general workhorse committee. It's consumer protection bills, ethics bills, trans, uh, general government uh, transparency type bills generally go through the State Affairs Committee. We also have, have jurisdiction over military veterans affairs on, in the Senate side. So it's a good committee. I'm, I'm thrilled to be there. I'm, I'm a, I, I like to do bills, you know, I, I, and, and not it's, just meeting with bills. It's in your name. <laughs> but, I, you know, it's, um, I, I like to try to get things passed that move the state forward, good public policy. And, uh, and so I think that's a good committee for me. I'm happy to be there. So are we going to get a gas line? Well, we're closer than we've been in 30 years, and we've had two open seasons. That's the big question that everyone is asking. You know, what do we do right now? And the next two years are going to be critical for us uh, in seeing how, how much further we get on a gas pipeline. We have uh, two open seasons. We know we have significant quantities of gas bid by major players in both, uh, both the open seasons. So we'll find out the results in the next couple of months, and uh, that will take up a huge amount of our time. I predict uh, there'll probably be summer spent in Juneau, hashing out uh, terms, fiscal certainty, but uh, that's going to be a top priority. Absolutely. What else do you, what do you think else is going to be up there that's going to be up for battle? I think another big thing that you, you will see some serious moves to try to roll back uh, the oil tax structure that we put in place a couple years ago. And, uh, you know, we'll have discussions on that. And we all want to see, we all want to see increased development. We all want to see increased exploration on the North Slope. Oil is so, so critical for our state. But if, you know, the proposals that were out last year were proposals to lower the progressivity. Basically, uh, there were proposals to change a four to a two. That's it. I think the bill, the, it basically would change the number four to the number two. And, the, and had we passed that bill last year, it would have cost us $2 billion. So there will be similar proposals this year. And the question that you need to ask is, okay, if we change that four to a two, is that going to get us $2 billion more worth of oil going through the pipeline? Is that going to get us more Alaskan jobs? Is that going to get us more development? Is that going to get us more exploration for an extended period of time? You know, we've been through this before. Uh, people forget when, when you talk about oil and gas taxes, we've been through this before. We had a taxation rate of 0% on 15 out of the 19 major fields on the North Slope just a few years ago. And a lot of people say, well, if you lower the oil tax rate, then investment will increase, right? That's sort of, that's, people just take that for granted. But just a few years ago, when we had that 0% tax rate, uh, oil production declined, investment declined. So uh, you know, before, before any legislator votes to, to give billions of dollars back, uh, I think we need to be pretty darn sure that we're going to get our money's worth on anything. And, and to, to, to date, we haven't had any assurances at all. And so on resources, I continue to plan to ask those questions. What are you going to do if we give you this tax break? And I want hard answers because that's what the people expect of us. Which is why they spent a lot of time and money uh, trying to get you out of, out of that seat. And I'm glad you prevailed. And uh, thank you, Eastside, for giving all of Alaska uh, Senator Wilikowski to go back and fight for us. Uh, we'll be checking in with you from time to time over this. And um, you know, whoever got elected from your district, whether they were someone you had their sign or not, pay attention to what they're doing. Don't uh, be afraid to call them. Send them an email, write them a letter, and let them know that you're paying attention because you have to do that for all of us. We'll be back with our panel and more up north.